وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We begin by praising Allah and by asking Allah to exalt the mention of grand peace to our Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his family and his companions. We're continuing on with our theme that children are a gift from Allah and a blessing from Allah azza wa jal. And they also, and this is what we're going to move on to in this episode also, that our children are also a test. And that means that there can be difficulties that come along as well as goodness and and blessings that come along as well. And we have to be careful that we manage that situation in the right way. So we're going to continue on talking about the fact that our children are a blessing from Allah by mentioning the ayah in which Allah spoke about the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. And Allah told us regarding what Nuh said, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدَرَارًا وَيُمْدِدَكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا مَا لَكُمْ لَا تَرْجُونَ لِلَّهِ وَقَارًا In Surah Nuh, Allah Azza wa Jal, He told us about what Nuh said. And that Nuh said, I said, seek the forgiveness of your Lord. Nuh said to his people, Seek the forgiveness of your Lord. Your Lord is always forgiving. What will happen if you seek the forgiveness of your Lord? And this is from the virtues of istighfar, by the way. From the virtues of asking Allah to forgive you. It's very important. The Prophet ﷺ said, Tawbah, Tawbah, that may the, the paradise or a tree in paradise before the one who sees in his in his sahifa, in his scroll, a lot of istighfar. Paradise for the one who sees a lot of istighfar in their scrolls, in their, in their scroll of good deeds. So there's many virtues to asking Allah's forgiveness. Here Nuh advises his people to seek the forgiveness of Allah. Astaghfiru Rabbakum. Ask your Lord to forgive you. Innahu kana ghaffara. He's always forgiving. Two things here. First of all, he said kana, which... Uh, here the word kana, yufid al-istimrar, it tells us that there's, it's a constant, it's never, it's a constant description of Allah, it's never something that goes and comes. And the word ghaffar is, it has here siratul mubalagha, it is in the form of emphasis, it's given emphasis, the word ghaffar is in itself emphasized, that Allah is always uh, immensely forgiving. Always, Allah is immensely forgiving. What will happen as a reward of that? The rain will come down upon you time and time. Again, Allah will cause the rain to fall down from the sky. And Allah will give you an increase in wealth and children. Allah will give you an increase in wealth and an increase in children. And this again shows us that if wealth and children and having an increase in them is related to istighfar, then it is a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal. So we can take it as a blessing because Allah Azza wa Jal is giving it as a reward for istighfar. And we can also learn that one of the ways that we can improve our situation in terms of the matar of this dunya, the temporary enjoyment of this dunya is to make a lot of istighfar. And Allah will make for you Gardens and Allah will make for you rivers. Then Allah Azza wa Jal said, "Ma lakum la tarjuna lillahi waqara." Why is it that you don't give Allah Azza wa Jal His just status that He has? Why is it that you don't give Allah Azza wa Jal that status that He deserves? Subhanahu wa Taala. And so again, this reminds us that all of these things come from Allah. It reminds us that. Istighfar, and it gives a benefit that istighfar and asking Allah to forgive us and saying astaghfirullah and so on. 
with sincerity and, and really realizing the mistakes that we have and turning to Allah can be a reason to be given these gifts. And he emphasizes to us again that children are a gift from the gifts of this worldly life. And Allah said, وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ وَإِنْ تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظَلُومٌ كَفَّارٌ Allah Azza wa said, Allah gave you from everything that you asked him. And if you count or try to count the blessings of Allah, you'll never be able to enumerate them. Indeed, man is extremely oppressive and extremely ungrateful. Now I want to ask you a question here. What does this ayah have to do with children? And I'll give you a warning, it might, be a, it might be a little bit, there might be a little bit of a trick question in it, but let's see how many of you get the right answer for this one. There might be more than one answer. I'll mention to you the translation of the ayah again. And he gave you from everything that you asked him. And if you count the blessings of Allah, you will not be able to enumerate them. You will not be able to actually reach them. You'll, even if you tried to count every blessing that you have, you wouldn't be able to actually get all of them and, and bring all of them. Indeed, man is very oppressive and extremely ungrateful. Okay, that being said, what does this ayah have to do with children? Have a pause of the video. Maybe if you've got your family watching, you can discuss it among each other. Maybe you can even look up the ayah in the Mus'haf. The ayah is uh, Surah uh, Ibrahim, uh, which is the 14th Surah, ayah number 34. Have a think. So inshallah, you pause the video and I hope you had a think. Actually, the reason I brought this ayah, to be honest, is because of ayah, the ayah that comes after it. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنًا وَجْنُبَنِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ And what I wanted to show, and even though you could have mentioned that this is from the things that children are from the things people constantly ask Allah for. It's one of the most common du'as that, oh Allah, give me children, give me righteous children, and so on, correct my children. And we're going to come to some of those du'as, inshallah ta'ala, as we move on through the course, inshallah. But actually, the very next ayah, the very next ayah talks about the du'a of Ibrahim to protect his children from making a partner with Allah. And that, to me, there is a direct link between those two things. That the children are a blessing. And when Allah mentions his blessings, the very next ayah after he mentions you can't count his blessings, he mentions children. And he mentions protecting your children from falling into shirk, from falling into polytheism and making a partner with Allah So to me, I actually was thinking about the ayat and there's more than one ayah in the Quran where Allah talks about the ni'am of Allah and you can't count them. You won't be able to count all of the blessings of Allah and thanking the blessings of Allah. And I was thinking, which ayah should I use in the course? Which one should I present to the students? Which one is the most appropriate? And then when I thought about the ayah in Surah Ibrahim, I thought immediately afterwards that this is the right one to use because this is the one that immediately afterwards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the blessings of children and Allah protecting Ibrahim's children and Ibrahim's concern for his children. So Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Allah gave you from everything that you asked. And then in the next ayah, Allah talks about the dua of Ibrahim where Ibrahim asked Allah, make this city safe and keep me and my children away from worshiping idols. We're going to talk about this dua later on, inshallah ta'ala, in more detail because it's going to come again on the topic of the rights of the children. But I just want to emphasize it. Ibrahim, Khalil Rahman, the more the the close friend of the most merciful, the one who is the most among the most beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this uh, and Ibrahim, this dua that he makes, this dua that he makes, and he asks Allah and begs Allah to keep his children away from idols. SubhanAllah, does that not show you how how scared Ibrahim was that his children would fall into shirk, that his children would fall into, into polytheism and into idol worship, even though Ismail and Ishaq were prophets. They were prophets from the Anbiya, alayhim salatu wassalam. 
They were prophets. And yet Ibrahim was so scared of shirk, of falling into polytheism, that he would ask Allah, Oh Allah, keep my children away from worshipping, keep me and my children away from worshipping idols. Ibrahim is a prophet. His two children are prophets. And he makes dua to Allah Azza wa Jal to keep him and his children away from worshipping idols. And that's why really you see the wisdom of putting this ayah in Bab al-Khawf min shirk in the chapter of fearing shirk, that you look at the fear that Ibrahim had that his children would fall into polytheism. But I actually wanted to bring this ayah for a different reason, which is that immediately after the Allah mentioning that he gives you everything you ask for, and that if you counted all the blessings of Allah, you wouldn't be able to count them, then Allah Azza wa mentions the blessing of children, and Allah is protecting you and your children from falling into a shirk, Billahi Azza wa Jal, making a partner with Allah Azza wa Jal. Our next ayah, as we're talking about children, as a blessing and a gift from Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, we're going to talk about the beginning of Surah Maryam. Allah Azza wa Jal said, Kaf ha ya ayn sa'ad, dhikru rahmati rabbika abadahu zakariya, idh nada rabbahu nida'an khafiyya. Qala rabbi inni wahan al-azmu minni wa ishta'ala al-ra'su shayba, wa lam akum bidu'aika rabbi shaqiyya. وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِيَ مِنْ وَرَائِي وَكَانَتِ امْرَأَتِي عَاقِرًا فَهَبَ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّ يَرِثُنِي وَيَرِثُ مِنْ آلِ يَعْقُوبَ وَجَعَلْهُ رَبِّ رَضِيَّ Surah Maryam from the first ayah to the sixth ayah. Allah Azza wa mentioned the huruf in the in the beginning of Surah Maryam, those broken letters that Allah Azza wa knows best about their meaning. And they are a challenge in reality to the Arabs who were experts in poetry and language to bring they, that they can't, they, even though these are just letters, they can't fully explain and understand their meanings and they can't bring the likes of it, even though they are, they are the same letters that they use in their speech. And that is from the better uh, things which are said about this, these letters, which are the broken letters in the Quran. And then Allah says about the mercy of Allah towards his servant, Zakaria. And then Allah Azza wa Jal talks about how he gave Zakaria a child and he gave him Yahya. So the first thing we want to take from this uh, series of ayat is that the child is from the Rahmah of Allah Azza wa Jal. The child is from the Rahmah of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal said, ذِكْرُ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّكَ عَبَدَهُ زَكَرِيَ Mentioning the mercy of your Lord to his servant Zakaria, when he called upon his Lord with a quiet supplication, a silent supplication. And this when he called upon Allah in private, and he called upon Allah Azza wa Jal in this supplication, it was from the Rahmah, the mercy of Allah, that Allah gave him Yahya. And so children are from the Rahmah of Allah Azza wa Jal, give the gift of being given a child is from the Rahmah, from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, my Lord, indeed, my bones have become weak and my head has become gray and I have never been towards your dua shaqiyya. He's never been neglectful of the dua of Allah Azza wa Jal or without hope or despairing and he's never been in a state of this of, of wretchedness and turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, he has always been diligent in his dua, calling upon Allah in fear and hope, and has always been hoping and expecting for an answer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, and indeed, I fear al-mawaliya min warai. I fear those who will inherit after me. And they said that al-mawali here are the other relatives, not like from not, not descendants of his because he didn't have any children. But they were from the, you know, for example, the uh, the, un the, the, the uncles and their children and so on, you know, the, the more distant relatives that he feared from what will happen after me. And my wife is barren, she's not able to have any children. Fahab, give me the gift of an inheritor who comes from me. Give me from me an inheritor. 
And here, the inheritor, as he said, يَرِثُنِي وَيَرِثُ مِنْ آلِ يَعْقُوبِ He will inherit me and he will inherit, inherit from the family of Ya'qub. Now what it seems here is, first of all, we want to highlight that he said, هَبْلِي فَهَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِي Give me the gift. Give me the gift of having a child who will inherit from me and from the family of Ya'qub. And that appears to be a reference to not only inheriting in terms of wealth, but in terms of prophethood. Because the prophets didn't leave behind dinar and dirham, as the Prophet ﷺ told us. They, they didn't leave behind لم يورثوا دينارا ولا درهما. They didn't leave behind a dinar or a dirham, gold or silver coins. لكن ورثوا العلم But they left behind knowledge. So when he says to inherit from me, the prophets didn't inherit, didn't leave behind dinar and dirham. But they left behind knowledge and prophethood. And that knowledge is what he wished for Yahya to inherit. وَجَعَلْهُ رَبِّ رَضِيَّ And make him Radiya, make him so that he is pleased or Allah is pleased with him and he is pleased with Allah Azza wa Jal. Like we say, Raditu Billahi Rabba wa bil Islam Dina wa bi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abiyya. I'm pleased with Allah as my Lord and Islam as my religion and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa as my Prophet. And likewise for Allah to be pleased with him. Like Allah Azza wa Jal said, Radi Allahu anhum wa radu an. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. So make him. Allah radiyya, make him from those who are pleased with Allah Azza wa Jal as their Lord and make him from those who are pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal. So this, these are all a lot of benefits we can take from this. The fact that it is a rahmah, the fact that our children are a gift and the dua of Zakariya to have uh, children, that dua that he made to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is also mentioned elsewhere in the Quran, for example, Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَزَكَرِيَّا إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ رَبِّ لَا تَذَرْنِي فَرْدًا وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الْوَارِثِينَ And Zakariya, when he called upon his Lord, my Lord, do not leave me alone. Alone meaning without a child. And you are the best of al-warithin. You are the best of those who inherit. And here we have a dua, which is one of the duas that is legislated to make for children. If you don't have any children. To say, رَبِّ لَا تَذَرْنِي فَرْدًا وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الْوَارِثِينَ But the reason I brought this uh, here is actually to show that if this is from the du'as of the Prophets uh, والسلام, then this is a blessing from Allah Azawajal because the Prophets only ask for that which is good and that which brings them near to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So he said, رَبِّ لَا تَذَرْنِي فَرْدًا oh Allah, don't leave me alone, i.e. here without a child without a child. And one of the benefits, we didn't mention this in Surah Maryam, we could have also mentioned it, is one of the benefits of the children is they carry on the work that you do. Inshallah ta'ala, we hope the good work that you do carries on through your children. فَاسْتَجَبَنَا لَهُ وَوَهَبَنَا لَهُ يَحْيَى وَأَصْلَحْنَا لَهُ زَوْجَهُ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ This is in Surah Al-Anbiya' between ayah number 89 and ayah number 90. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, and we answered him. And we gave him the gift of Yahya. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ يَحْيَى We gave him the gift of Yahya. وَأَصْلَحْنَا لَهُ زَوْجَهُ And we made his wife right. I We made her able to bear children. Indeed, they used to rush to do good deeds. And they used to call upon us in fear and hope. And they were submissive and humble before us. SubhanAllah. If anyone ever, and I, and I really believe this is a benefit, it, it, it's worth writing down. Write down the reference to this ayah, Surah Al-Anbiya, which is ayah number 21, ayah, uh, Surah number 21, ayah number 90, and this is the answer why so many people's dua is not answered or the reason why so many people's du'a is not answered, or why is it that people's du'a is answered. SubhanAllah, look at the description. Look at what Zakaria got. He was old, his wife couldn't have children, and yet they, had a, they were given a child after that. Someone says, well, how could that happen? The reason is that Allah Azza wa said, إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ They used to rush to do good deeds. They used to make du'a to us in fear and hope. They used to submit with humility 
and humbleness and complete submission before Allah And that is the situation you need to be in if you want your dua to be accepted. And it's not only, this is not only said about Zakaria, but about all the prophets that were mentioned prior to that in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayyub is mentioned, Yunus is mentioned, Ayyub when he was saved from his extreme sickness and loss of his family and poverty that happened to him because of the shaitan as a test from Allah Azza wa Jal, Ayyub got his dua answered. Yunus, when he went into the belly of the fish or the belly of the whale and he was uh, spat out onto the shore when he was extremely sick and Allah Azza wa Jal sent him back to his people and all of them accepted Islam and his dua was answered. And then Zakaria, when he was an old man and his wife couldn't have children and then they had children and his dua was answered. Why? إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ Because they used to rush to do good deeds. وَيَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا And they used to call upon us in fear and hope. وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ And they had that humbleness and submission and khushu'atu and khashya towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had fear of Allah. They had khushu' They had humbleness and submission before Allah. All of that is the reason why Allah Azza wa Jal answered their dua. And so if you want your dua to be answered, Try to reach as close to this description. Saddidu wa qaribu. Do the right thing and come as near to it as you can. You will not be able to reach it, but do the best that you can to be from the people who rush to do good deeds and who call upon Allah in fear and hope and who are submissive and humble before Allah Azza wa Jal. And the closer you can get towards that, the more it is that you're going to find that dua that you make that it seems almost impossible that that dua could be answered and nothing is impossible for Allah, you will find that inshallah it will be answered the closer you will get towards that description and the more you strive to be from the people who this is their description. They rush and race each other in doing good deeds and they call upon Allah in fear and hope and they are completely submissive and humble before Allah Azza wa Jal. And likewise about Zakaria in Surah Ali Imran, Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned also, هُنَالِكَ دَعَى زَكَرِيَّا رَبَّهُ قَالَ رَبِّ هَبَ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَةً إِنَّكَ السَّمِيعُ الدُّعَى And when Zakaria called upon his Lord in that place, that blessed place which is the, the mihrab, the area, the prayer area, where he, would, he had Maryam, where Maryam was there, and Maryam, she would find that her food and her rizq, it was being it just, it came from nowhere. Like it's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Zakaria, in that place, هُنَالِكَ دَعَى زَكَرِيَّ رَبَّهُ He called upon his Lord. He said, my Lord, give me from you ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَةً ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَةً Righteous or good, good offspring. ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَةً They are good. And طَيِّبَةً is a description of everything which is good and everything which is pleasing. Pleasing and good offspring. إِنَّكَ سَمِيعُ الدُّعَى So again, the fact that he said, Oh Allah, give me. And it's a gift from Allah Azza wa Jal who is Al-Wahhab. The one who is always bestowing, always giving to his servants. Give me ذُرِّيَّةً طَيِّبَةً Offspring that are good. And that was one of also a variation of the dua of Zakaria for children. And Allah Azza wa Jal said in Surah Al-Furqan, Ayah number 74, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ عَيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا And those who say our Lord, give us from our spouses and our offspring those which will be the pleasure of our eyes, pleasing to our eyes, and make us an example for the pious. And here, again, the fact that you're asking Allah to give you this gift shows that our children are a gift from Allah Azza wa Jal. The fact that our children can be they can be that which brings pleasure to our eyes from the things which bring us pleasure in the dunya and if we manage it correctly bring us pleasure in the akhirah as well we bring us pleasure yawm qiyamah as well and make us an example for the muttaqin make us an example for the for the people of taqwa and that is for us and for our children we want us and our children all of us waja'alna make all of us an example that the people of taqwa, that an example of what it means to be from the people of taqwa. And this is Surah Al-Furqan, ayah number 74, as we said, which also highlights the same point. And Allah said, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِّنْ قَابَلِكَ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَذُرِّيَّةً 
and this is in Surah Al-Ra'd, in ayah number 38. And we'd already mentioned this on the topic of uh, wives, but we want to highlight this point again on the topic of children, that we have certainly sent messengers before you, and we made for them wives, and we made for them offspring. So having children is one of the sunan of the Anbiya, one of the things that the prophets did. And so that tells us its importance and the fact that it is a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal and the fact that it's a means for nearness to Allah because the prophets only did that which brought them near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is from the sunan of the Anbiya to get married and to have children is from the sunan of the Anbiya. And that is another proof for the blessing of our children. And Allah Azza wa Jalla said in Surah An-Nisa in ayah number 11, آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ لَا تَدْرُونَ أَيُّهُمْ أَقْرَبُ لَكُمْ نَفْعَى Your fathers and your children, you don't know which of them is going to be nearer in benefit to you. We brought this actually to show the fact that your children can be a great benefit to you in this world and in the hereafter. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jalla said, آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبَنَاؤُكُمْ لَا تَدْرُونَ أَيُّهُمْ أَقْرَبُ لَكُمْ نَفَعَ You don't know which one is going to be the one that really benefits you. You don't know which one of your children. You might actually think that there is a child who isn't really, you know, like, didn't do anything for you in the dunya. Didn't help you anything in the dunya. They didn't do anything for me in the dunya. Or they didn't get the, they didn't, serve me or help me in the way that I wanted or get me what I wanted from them in this worldly life. But you don't know Yawm al Qiyamah which is the child that is going to benefit you or which is the, and the, the person in your family that is going to benefit you the most. And perhaps your children would be from the people, and this is why I brought the ayah, that perhaps this, your children could be from those who benefit you more than anyone else. آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبَنَاؤُكُمْ لَا تَدْرُونَ أَيُّهُمْ أَقْرَبُ لَكُمْ نَفْعَى your fathers and your children, you don't know which of them are going to benefit you or we're going to be closer to benefit, to bringing you benefit. And Abi Hurairah narrated from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said, إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانُ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَنْهُ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ صَدَقَةٍ جَارِيَةٍ أو عِلْمٍ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ أو وَلَدٍ صَالِحٍ يَدْعُ لَهِ this hadith narrated by Imam Muslim from the noble companion Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a person dies, all of their deeds cease except for three. Continuous charity, or knowledge that is benefited from, or a righteous child that makes dua for you. And I brought this egg after the hadith, after the ayah in Surah An-Nisa, to show you one of the ways your children could benefit you when you don't even realize it. Abu Huraira said, when a person dies, all of their deeds finish. Everything that you did, it is closed and sealed and written for you. If it's good, it's good. And if it's bad, it's bad. That's what you have to put before Allah Azza wa Jal when you stand before Allah. That's what you have, what you did in your life, except for three things that can continue to add to your scrolls and to your good deeds even after you die. One is sadaqa jariya, continuous charity. That is a charity you gave, but the benefit of that charity continues after you die. So for example, somebody built a well. When they were alive, they paid for the well and they built the well. And the well continues to have water drawn from it. As long as that well continues to have a benefit, the rewards continue to go to the person. And it's not just a well. Whoever gives away a mushaf, for example, or whoever builds a masjid, or whoever uh, builds a school, whatever it might be that is done for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, as long as the benefit continues, the person continues to get reward for it. Or knowledge that is benefited from. Somebody wrote a book or perhaps left a, uh, some lectures, some audio lectures or video lectures and people continue to benefit from them. Then they continue to be rewarded for them 
even after they die, as long as people are benefiting from them. And the third one is the one that we wanted here. A walad in salihin yad'u or a righteous child that makes dua for you. And that righteous child that makes dua for you can be a reason. That righteous child that makes dua for you can be a reason to benefit you even after you die. And what a blessing that is to have children and not just, and here the word walad is, it covers boys and girls. So it could be a boy, it could be a girl. You could think that only my sons will benefit me. What benefit is my daughter going to bring to me? Like the people in Jahiliya used to believe. They used to say, what benefit is my daughter going to bring to me? My, only my sons will bring me benefit. My sons will work for me, serve me, help me. You know, they will benefit me. They will continue my lineage. What benefit will my daughter bring for me? Perhaps it is your daughter's dua that will be the reason that you enter Jannah. Perhaps your daughter's dua when you thought that daughter wasn't going to benefit you anything, like the people in Jahiliya, and it's not an Islamic concept, but the, what the people in Jahiliya used to believe, and until today, still until today, the people don't leave this idea that their daughters are not going to benefit them and their daughters are a burden and so on. Many people still have this false Jahili belief. But look at this, that daughter could be the one that makes dua for you, and that dua could be the reason you enter Jannah. Or that child that you didn't think there was any good from them, you couldn't see any good from them, boy or girl. You said, oh, what this boy, what's he gonna do? You know, he's not, he hasn't benefited me anything. He hasn't gone and got a good job. He hasn't helped me in my, in my worldly life. Perhaps that one child would turn to Allah and make dua for you, and that dua would be the reason you enter Jannah. Ultimately, our children, that shows you, they are, they are a huge investment that we have with a big hope of return. What is the return we want on our investment? It's not a worldly return. Worldly things don't concern us. What concerns us is that our children, when we die, are there to continue to make dua for us and might be a reason for our deeds to continue and to continue to get good deeds even after we pass away. And that could be our children and it could be our grandchildren and so on. Who are that people from their lineage that carries on and they make dua for us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might enter a person to Jannah or forgive a person or raise a person's rank in Jannah because of this dua that they make. And that is confirmed for us and emphasized for us in a hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu and it's narrated by uh, Al-Tabarani in his book on dua and al-bayhaqi that Allah azza wa jalla Abi Huraira narrated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala la yarfa'u lirrajul al-daraja فيقول أنا لهذه فيقول بدعاء ولدك لك أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه narrated that Allah تبارك وتعالى will raise a man's levels up in Jannah يوم القيامة Allah عز وجل will raise him up levels so he will say what is this where did this come from where did I get this I didn't do anything I have seen my deeds I have seen my scrolls I haven't done any, how am I so, how have I been raised up so many levels? What have I done to deserve this raising of my level? And Allah will say to him, Because your child made dua for you. Subhanallah. Even that it might raise a person up levels in paradise because of the dua of their children for them. So that's what Allah Azza wa Jal made easy for me to mention. And I still haven't got to the point where we are going to talk about how our children are a test and a responsibility. That's going to come up in the next uh, lesson, inshallah ta'ala. Um, we will hopefully, inshallah, we will get that far. But up to now, we still have been talking about our children as a blessing and how we have to show thanks and gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal for that blessing. That's inshallah ta'ala what Allah made easy for me to mention in this uh, episode on Allah knows best wa salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Assalamu alaikum If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running make sure you head over to amauathome.com